Hey everybody, Kenny Jang here. So glad to be with you for another installment here of a conversation across the interwebs. Today, nice. I've got my good friend Rich Birch on the other hey, side. Kenny. <laughs> Great to be with you. Hey, good to be with you, Kenny. I noticed that you're wearing the color of your shirt matches the book that I'm releasing. There's a, yes. is that on purpose? It's color coordinated. <laughs> I'm all excited. Appreciate that. Thanks for being on brand. <laughs> um, it is launch day coming up, right? So uh, let's just yes. get right to it, Rich. Um, yep. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what is this book that's coming out this week? Okay, great. So uh, my name's Rich. I've been a church leader for almost 20 years. And a part of what I do is I run this blog called Unseminary. And we I'm about 180 interviews in to a lot of different church leaders across the country. And what I've done is I've compressed and picked out 10 stories that I really think are important for all church leaders to listen in on. Um, these aren't from your typical kind of brand name churches. You know, there's like those five or six churches that we all think about all the time. These are from churches that you probably haven't heard of before. Um, and they're, they're really stories that I'm hoping will inspire churches to think about doing something different. Now, don't replicate what these churches are doing. Uh, they're unreasonable. You don't want to do it. I want you to be unreasonable in your own way. And so I'm hoping that churches will read this book. It'll be kind of an inspiration uh, for them and their team. Now, when I got this book, so I'm, I'm actually excited because I got an early advanced copy of the book. I was able to actually uh, read through it. I actually devoured it. It's one of those books, I must say, um, this is a commentary on the publishing industry as a whole, that books today seem to be able to be summarized in like one chapter, right? And then the rest is fluff, right? 10% good True. stuff and then the rest is fluff. This book right. actually chapter after chapter after chapter was meaty. It actually mm -hmm. had really good nuggets of information and content going through the entire journey. So um, I, I must say this, is, if this isn't something that you want to either just read um, on the plane and you'll put it down and forget it. I think you're going to revisit it because there's different mm -hmm. topics that you walk through. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the structure of this book, how you put it together? Well, I appreciate that. That First of all, that's really kind of you to say that. Um, really what we did is every chapter, there's 10 different stories that are profiled. And I really did try to make them distinct, although there's kind of common themes that run throughout each one of them. It really tells a different story, um, dives into a particular church, and then ultimately leaves, hopefully leaves the church leader who's le le reading it, kind of asking questions about their own church. It ultimately asks the question, are you ready to be on reasonable. And so, yeah, each chapter really could stand on its own. I was thinking about, you know, books that I've read with my team over the years. And what I, you know, a lot of times you're right, like you'll read a book and there's like four chapters or two chapters that you want to read. And I've kind of designed it with that in mind that it's a church leader. You could read through it all and say, hey, here are three chapters that I think would be good exactly. for us um, to, you know, to check out and read through. And 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 so that that's really the way it's designed is so that people can uh, really dig in and try to inspire their teams. I, I love the fact that the, the way I explain it, I explained this to a friend yesterday um, who was asking me about the book. I said, this is one of those things where um, when you go off and do something, you always say, I'm going to do it as if I'm writing it for me, right? You're like trying to redo the whole category. <laughs> At the end of each chapter, I just want to point out to all the viewers here that Rich puts questions to consider at the end of each chapter and takeaway <laughs> summaries, which I think is very helpful because uh, sometimes you lose sight of what you've been reading or blowing through in terms of all these stories. And this keeps you on point. But for me, it was, as I'm writing notes, um, each one of these stories becomes um, an example or a case that I'll remember, like the fundraising story, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. that, that, mm -hmm. It becomes iconic for each scenario, uh, mm -hmm. which brings me to the question that I guess you, as you alluded to it. This is meant really for um, not individual reading, but teams to be read together, right? Yeah, absolutely. What I was thinking again was, uh, what's a book I would like to use with my team? And you know, I'm gonna let you know a little secret here, Kenny. I we did those. I did those takeaway points because when I what typically what happens is leaders read a book first. And then just because of the way the training schedule goes, it's like, we're going to come back to this in two or three months and read it together as a team. Yes. Well, I've done that so many times and I'm like, this is a great book. But then when it actually comes up to my team needing to read it, I'm like, I can't remember what this was about. What was it about this chapter? And so what I did was we put those takeaway points to kind of remind church leaders. So they'd be like, oh yeah, right, right. I remember what this was about to hopefully kind of, you know, to spur their thinking a little bit. So when they're doing it with their people, they don't seem like an idiot. Like, did you actually read this at all? Um, so that was kind of the, you know, the idea. So yeah, definitely it's it's really designed to reread as a team. I'm hoping that people will do it, um, you know, together. That That's really the way we designed it. And, and you say in your, I guess, your manifesto for the platform for this book is that 94% of church yes. teams are not gaining ground in their community, right? Yeah. Um, yes. And 
this are you saying that this is that thread the red line that runs through all these successful churches that teams really need to wake up and listen to and and, and open their eyes to yeah, absolutely. So I had a couple of years ago, I had a friend challenge me and they said, why do you do this blog? What is this all about? What What are you concerned about? What's your passion point? And it really comes back to that number. 94% of all churches, it's also a Lifeway um, research number that they use. 94% of all churches are losing ground against the growth of the communities they serve. A lot of times we hear that number expressed that 80% of churches are plateaued or in decline, but it's actually worse than that. So there are a freak, about half the churches that are growing today aren't growing as quickly as their communities that they're in. And so, you know, we've got to find churches that are making an impact that are growing more quickly uh, than the communities that they serve, ultimately gaining ground for the gospel. And so that's a part of what we've tried to do or I've tried to do with highlighting um, stories from those kind of churches in this book. Yeah, I love the fact that it's very practical. I'm just going to read out a couple of the chapter titles, Rich, if it's sure. OK, because yeah. you make it very clear that mm. these aren't, you know, other books have these generic stories that are just feel good <laughs> stories. But yes. here you 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 know you zero in. The first chapter one is unreasonable fundraising, unreasonable selfishness, um, connections, service, discipleship, locations, focus, diversity, expansion, mm -hmm. and outreach. Um, I think those are very good topics. Um, almost as if you can do it even in a church retreat, right? Like a, split up the chapters for each of your different mm -hmm. service teams or ministry areas, cool. oh, um, yeah. and then come back together and uh, do some sharing and learning. Yeah, I really try to be practical in all the stuff we do online. I, you know, and I didn't want to write another book. Like, frankly, I, you know, part of what I said is like, do we really need another book on church leadership? Um, I didn't want to do something that just would be kind of so ethereal and and you know really stuck in the clouds. I wanted to be super practical and helpful, hopefully, uh, to people who are listening in. So you said that the the stories here um, mm -hmm. are all pulled from also the relationships and the podcast interviews that you've done on your uh, podcast. Yeah, so we do a weekly podcast at on seminar. It's a little more than weekly. We've done, you know, we'll sometimes do two a week, that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, each one of these are, are churches that I've profiled um, on the podcast, but they're ones that intrigued me enough that I kind of leaned in and said, hey, I want to get to know your story a little bit more. So it's not just a compression of, you know, what I learned on the podcast. What I've tried to do is fill out the story a bit more. We can only, the interviews are about 20 minutes long. You can't really cover that much detail. So we tried to dig in a little bit deeper, um, provide a bit more context, a bit more, you know, why is it what they're doing is unreasonable, you know, Know, as the book talks about. But yeah, they, they really are pulled from there. Um, their stories and people that I originally bumped into there and then have got, been able to go deeper. Now, if I wanted to hear those 10 podcast episodes, um, is there an easy place to get a listing of that? Is that on your website or how, how can I find those? Yeah, that's a great that's a great idea. I haven't actually pulled that together, but I could easily do that. Pull together a resource that says, you know, here they all are. Um, if you want to go back and listen to them with links, obviously you could just search the name of the church and on seminary, and you'd be able to find them, you know, pretty easily. Uh, but yeah, that's a good idea. I should do that. And that's a lead, and I guess segue for me um, personally is that I love the resources that you're providing at on seminary. Can you share a little bit uh, with our listeners here today? Um, the unsummary brand and platform and then the other services that you have there for church leaders, the training that you have available. Yeah, so our tagline on seminary is stuff they didn't teach you in seminary or stuff yeah. you wish they taught you in seminary. And so what we do is we provide generally every week, it's one, at least one article and then one uh, interview on the podcast. But then we do regular webinars with, uh, you know, various church leaders or vendors that support. Um, we provide a quarterly magazine. So we, we'll do like we've done ones that are focused on multi-site or, you know, generosity or um, you know, different things, volunteers. And that what that is, is not only our own articles, but then other thought leaders from across the Christian space, trying to provide a kind of resource for you. Uh, we do have a membership site uh, as well on the pay side, but most of what we do is free. Um, and I'm hoping that what it'll do is encourage leaders on the practical side. Uh, you know, I love to, there's other, you know, thought leaders out there, folks like Kerry Newhoff or, you know, Tony Morgan, who I think are, I, a lot of times I think those guys are at like 30,000 feet, uh, just doing an incredible job. And I'm like 10,000 feet, like let's dig into some of the practical stuff. And so that's really, you know, with people from across the, you know, evangelical or Christian world um, who listen in and are a part of the conversation. So it's, it's exciting. It's fun to be a part of. Great. Um, if, the, if someone wants to get in touch with you personally, what's the best way to do that online? Yeah, best way would be uh, probably Twitter, just Rich Birch, my name on, you know, on Twitter. I'm still one of the people who are using the Twitters. Uh, or you can, you know, jump by unseminary.com, uh, just how it says unseminary.com, or you can email me rich at unseminary, uh, any of those ways. I'd be happy to get back. And just for everybody, let's go over that. It's, it's Unreasonable Churches, the name of the book. Yeah, Unreasonable uh, where Churches. Where can they pick it up? 
Yeah, you can get it at Amazon, or um, if you just go to unreasonablechurches.com, you can pick it up there. And actually, if you get two copies and then email team at unreasonablechurches, we'll actually send you back a, an audiobook version. It's actually a professionally done audiobook. Uh, we'll send that back to you for free because I know not all team members want to read the book, so we want to give it to you. So, you know, hey, you could give it to people to listen to. And then also these printable uh, team discussion guides. So it makes it really easy. So when you're actually going into the team discussion, you just print it out, hand it out to them. And, and, and so you'll get those for free. So if you buy two or more copies, just send the receipt to team at unreasonablechurches.com. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Well, thank you. I know this week is really busy with the launch. I really appreciate you just uh, stopping by and chatting with us today, Rich. Thanks so much, Kenny. Love what you do. Love everything that you're a part of. Thanks, buddy.